Welcome back to our continuing coverage on highway alignment. We are now into part 3D. And that 3D is all about alignment of sag vertical curves. Just as in the case of crest curves, there are three possibilities in which a sag curve is formed. First, you can see a negative grade G1 is followed by a positive grade G2. In the second case, a steeper negative grade G1 is followed by relatively less steep negative grade G2. And in the third case, a flatter positive G1 is followed by a relatively steeper and still positive grade G2 makes a sag vertical curve. When it comes to sag curves, there are additional considerations in design. We have seen stopping side distance, passing and decision side distances, right? Now enter HSD, headlight side distance, which determines the design of sag curves. Why headlight? Because at night, the portion of highway that is visible to the driver is dependent on the position of the headlights and the direction of the light beam. And then again, why nighttime and why not daytime? In daytime, you can see far ahead and the visibility restriction occurs only in the nighttime. Therefore, how far you can see in headlights is what determines the stopping distance on Zag cars. If for some economic reasons, such lengths, meaning headlight side distance cannot be provided, fixed source of lighting should be provided to assist the driver. And the second main consideration in designing SAG curve is passenger comfort. Once again, we don't want to make the drive along the vertical alignment like a roller coaster ride. And as previously mentioned, drainage control is very important for SAG curves. And finally, in SAG curve design, the appearance also matters. When it comes to side distance on SAG curves during daytime, seeing is believing. Of course, pun intended. Take this SAG curve. SSD is unrestricted on SAG curves during daylight hours, like in this case. Therefore, nighttime conditions govern design, and thus the critical concern for headlight side distance, that is, that is the length of road illuminated by the vehicle's headlights, which is a function of the height of the headlight and the upward angle of the headlight beam. The headlight variables are shown in this figure. At the height of the headlight above the roadway is H, and the inclined upward angle of the headlight beam related to the horizontal plane of the car is beta. Just like crest curves, we need expressions for determining the minimum length of the curve for a given SSD. Using trigonometric functions, just as we did in crest vertical cases, we can derive equations for minimum sag curve length. And these two equations here, the first one is for length of the curve, minimum length of the curve required for SSD less than L. And the second equation is the minimum length of the curve required for SSD greater than L. Astro specs call for typical headlight of a passenger car is at two feet high above the pavement level. That is the value of H equals two feet. And the angle beta is about one degree. Substituting two feet for H and one degree for beta, our heroes then become these two equations. As in the case of crest curves, if you are not sure if SSD is less than or greater than L, start with an assumption, say SSD is less than L, solve for L using the first formula. And if you turn out to be wrong, use the other formula and in one of the cases, you'll be right. Just as in the case of crest curves, why bother assuming and computing and recomputing when you can use the ready-made canned values from Green Book? Like, let's say your design speed is 55. Then get your value of K from this table, which is 115. Let's say your G1 is minus 2% and G2 is plus 1.5% which is, by the way, that's what makes a SAC curve. Therefore, you have to look for K values in the table, which is specific to SAC curves. Again, do not look in the 
table that corresponds to crest curves see here also you don't need to compute ssd value you are directly looking up for k value and your a value here is 3.5 just as as we shown in part c for crest curves so plug k and a values into l l equals k times a voila you got 402.5 feet for the minimum length of the curve and next 5 feet which is 405 feet once again do not use the wrong table for sag curve meaning like if you have the sag curve problem do not use the crest curve table it's a no no let's discuss slightly about underpass side distance it's a structure passing over a sag curve which may block a driver's line of sight over the full length of the curve and like in this example for those of you who are familiar with Fairfax city and the surroundings in the Washington DC area this is the underpass where route 29 crosses the Fairfax county parkway same structure a bit more close up the war pass which structures you see are that of Fairfax county parkway and the ramps are that of West Ox road Once again there's a lot of trigonometry involved in computing the underpass side distance and also the clearance height hc here and let's see all these variables what these variables are all but one of these variables is familiar to you here s is side distance meaning it is stopping side distance not necessarily stopping side distance that's what it means it is the available distance you can see under the conditions So to avoid confusion I would have preferred to use SSD but this is taken directly from your textbook so I didn't want to confuse here by throwing in something that text doesn't show you So anyhow the new variable here is hc which is the clearance height of overpass structure about the roadway in feet or meters Again from the properties of parabola for equal tangent curve we can do the form, uh, following formula for s less than l or stopping distance less than l the length of the curve minimum length of the curve is given the by the first equation and for s greater than l minimum length of the curve is given by the second equation and of course there are going to be lots of challenges while you are designing vertical curves most ideal conditions are not always possible depending on the site conditions there can be restrictions on any or any combinations of the variables uh, first length of the curve initial grade g1 or tangent grade g2 clearance height hc and what's the possible solution as engineers we have one variable under control which is speed work with it and redesign often the redesign is a trial and error process whatever is your final design devise a proper communication mechanism to convey the design variables to the drivers for example even the ashto guidelines call for a minimum clearance of 14.5 feet the best you can do is a clearance of 12.6 so put up a proper sign in proper places something like this caution low clearance or the the, the clearance is 12 feet 6 inches whichever and where, wherever it is appropriate for the situation just use the proper signage take it from mutcd and convey that information to the drivers will it work of course not everybody is going to pay attention to the signs
Challenges come in variety of forms. For instance, we may be required to design compound curves. By compound curves, I mean a crust vertical curve immediately followed by a sag curve or vice versa. A vertical curve on a horizontal curve can be another challenge. Or an exotic combination of multiple vertical and horizontal curves in a short length and all with limited lengths and restricted horizontal and vertical clearances. Needless to say, the complexity of design increases with the number of curve elements and restrictions. Of course, we are not going to deal with all of them in this course, and we introduce the elements and then the design codes. When you are actually becoming a practitioner, you will be able to figure things out on your own, and that's the idea. Now we come to a stage where we can do some problems on sag curves. By the way, I did not forget to put the important stamp on slides for all parts of this module, which is module 3 on highway alignment. That's because all the concepts I talked about, they are very important. I'm not just kidding like I was kidding in some other slides. That's because there are several reasons why. The FE exam is pretty much covers every single aspect of this one. So you got to be thorough on this module. So that's all I'm saying. Before we conclude this video, here are some other review questions which are important from the perspective of concepts, meaning they can appear in the quiz. Try to get the answers for the questions and more, of course. When you watch the video, you should be able to critically think through the design elements for SAC curves. And that marks the end of part 3D on SAG vertical curves. Dhaniwad.